Welcome to Working with Health IT Systems, HIT Facilitated Error, Cause and Effect. This is Lecture A. This unit will focus on error in health and healthcare that can be facilitated and propagated by HIT. Different classes of HIT errors, such as slips, mistakes, errors of omission, and errors of commission, will be discussed and differentiated. Specific scenarios that create opportunities for HIT facilitated error will be presented to students in the lab exercises. In these exercises, students will apply concepts learned in the didactic portion of this unit to identify error, classify error, analyze root cause, and propose solutions. The objectives for HIT facilitated error, cause and effect, lecture A, are to explain the concept of facilitated error in HIT, cite examples of situations where HIT systems could increase the potential for user error. As an example, what is pictured here on the slide is common to many clinicians in busy clinics or offices. There are distracting noises, there is that messy paper chart, there are huge stresses and strains on memory, and so on. You can see this nurse questioning herself, did I give that dose of insulin? Who was that they were paging? Uh-oh, is that my patient's monitor that's alarming? What did the resident do with that chart? It's not hard to imagine how these sorts of situations lead to shortcuts, errors, and missed opportunities. It becomes very obvious how error happens. Understanding how error is facilitated in context helps you to better understand how to design better. The next slide contains a link to a video that's a good idea for you to watch. It does require an internet connection. It's an elective video, so if you do not have an internet connection, do not worry. If you do have one, copy the URL and watch it when you have a moment. This video from YouTube illustrates an avoidable medical error involving actor Dennis Quaid's newborn twins. This link was accurate as of February 2016. If the link is not available or if you need to come back at a later time to watch this video, you can do an internet search on the subject matter of Quaid twins and medication error and you should be able to easily find this video. The mix-up that Dennis Quaid speaks of is easily illustrated here. Look at these bottles. You can easily see how someone could have mixed them up. The nurse, even though distracted, should have been more careful. But the real question is, why are two bottles of the same medication with massively different doses, both in the same size bottle, with a blue label, and stored in the same medicine drawer? This is a design problem. How does it relate to health IT? Just like medicine bottles, health IT that is not thought out, not well designed, not based in user-centered design is bound to cause similar issues. You, as a health IT professional, need to be on the alert for poor design, whether it's a medicine bottle or an EHR that could result in disastrous consequences. You are part of the critical safety net. What is meant by stuck in thinking? This is when people do the same thing over and over again because that is the way they have always done it. Things are changing all the time in medicine. Processes change, medications change, procedures change. If clinicians are stuck in a way of thinking about something, it can contribute to error. Well-designed health IT can begin to influence this. For example, a provider who routinely orders a particular brand name medication is offered a generic equivalent that has the same pharmacotherapeutic action, but is less toxic to the kidneys. And, oh yeah, it happens to be half the price. Moving on, let's think about the ASH article. You can find the link to it in the references. It is a terrific article for this unit where the terms juxtaposition and unclear directions were in introduced. This article talks about clinicians who frequently committed juxtaposition errors. This error occurs when something is too close to something else on the screen and the wrong option is too easily clicked in error. In prior slides, we talked about some small font sizes and clustering drugs together where the first couple of letters are the same. Add an eight-point font to that and juxtaposition rules. In the ASH article, the following transcript was presented. Quote, I was ordering cortisporin and cortisporin solution and suspension comes up. The patient was talking to me. I accidentally put down solution, realized that's not what I wanted. I would have not made that mistake or potential mistake if I had been writing it out because I would have put down what I wanted, end quote. Putting all these things together, we start to see how error can happen. So what does this have to do with health IT, you say? 
Well, when you are designing systems or just considering which system to buy, these are the things you need to think about. Clinicians are busy, distracted, multitasking, and tired, so tiny print does not work. Have your users act out scenarios with the system and make them realistic and tough. Start ringing the phone, have plenty of interruptions on hand, and ask them to complete an example task. You may see where the health IT system might contribute to potentiating error. Later in this unit, we will see another video where the unclear directions comes directly to the fore. Error in healthcare also occurs when roles change, communication changes, and workflow is altered. For example, when CPOE was first being introduced in the healthcare industry, remember that CPOE is computerized provider order entry, the change in the ways of doing shifted profoundly. Nurses were used to the prescriber verbally discussing changes in orders or conferring with other members of the care team and then writing a physical order in the chart. Ward clerks would transcribe the order, put in a pneumatic tube, and ship to the lab. There were numerous areas where communication occurred, and by the end, several different members of the care team knew when something changed in the patient's plan of care. No more. A prescriber can change an order from off-site by logging into the EHR, change an order, and the other members of the care team would not know unless they happen to open the EHR. Orders go directly to the lab or pharmacy or wherever. Often the first alert that something has changed is when a new medication physically arrives on the floor and everyone stands around and asks, who is this for? Why did this get delivered by pharmacy? When did the order change? I just gave her the 10 a.m. dose of the prior medication. I didn't know this was changed. Workflow, roles, and communication have changed distinctly. Of course, there are good things that are happening here like elimination of bad handwriting, reduction of filling out forms, and the like. They are just different things, and when change happens, error can sneak in. If an EHR is integrated into existing workflows without regard for the changes they will introduce, you can end up with the so-called unanticipated consequences or bad downstream effects. There are numerous reports of healthcare personnel exhibiting undue trust in computer-generated recommendations also. The point to be made here is that a computer does not replace human judgment, it only augments it. Ultimately, the person makes the decision, and liability for a given action rests, most of the time anyway, with that person. The advice pr provided by a computer is only as good as the person who programmed it there in the first place. If a person programs the computer to round up, then the system will do that, and often with grave consequences. Errors in healthcare come from problems with currency and appropriateness. A medication that is considered safe today is suddenly pulled from the market, and the need to change all of the systems that incorporate that particular medication quickly. If a decision rule exists that suggests the use of the now no longer safe medication, what is your plan for getting that change instituted in all systems that contain that rule? If it is in a centralized location, great, but we know that many of the systems in use today are distributed and they don't talk to one another. Does this mean multiple off-site trips to update the rules? How are you going to make sure that no site or system falls through the cracks? This is a huge problem in health IT, keeping the rules, the data, the algorithms all current. If not, error propagates extremely fast with just the touch of a button. Appropriate, appropriateness is a challenge as well in medical error. Humans are unique, situations are unique. We operate in the 80-20 rule space. What might be appropriate, efficient, safe for one person may be totally off base for another. Users who accept carte blanche, the health IT output, are exposing themselves to liability and their patients to error. Prescribing a medication that requires refrigeration for a certain condition may be best practice. But if the person is homeless in Phoenix, blind adherence to inappropriate guidance is not an indicator of high quality care. Alert fatigue is a common contributor to error in healthcare. Constantly alarming monitors desensitize providers. Just like the boy who cried wolf one time too many, over alarming results in the ignoring of safety measures that are designed to avoid error. Take a walk into a modern ICU, the cacophony of alarms, pagers, beeps, whooshes, overwhelming at first, soon becomes unheard. Or, as a workaround, users turn them off because they are alarming for nothing, right? What about the day when they are not? 
Systems that are so rigid that they force a usage pattern that is counter to safe practices can be disastrous in healthcare. Only, one only needs to investigate the increase in pediatric mortality at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center to see this in action. In brief, medications could not be ordered until a patient was admitted to the hospital, which sounds reasonable on the surface. But what happens with an emergency admission from an ambulance with a baby Jane Doe? Medications were not able to be ordered because the patient was not admitted. The mortality rates increased. A rigid system designed to reduce error ended up resulting in death. Rigid systems also result in workarounds for a busy user. Delays, extra clicks, nonsensical diversions, or questions will bring out the creativity for circumventing them. The point of all this is that the complex nature of healthcare work both creates and hides errors, which can be nearly invisible or silent. HIT can further potentiate that if you do not approach with eyes wide open. This concludes Lecture A of Unit 6, HIT Facilitated Error, Cause and Effect. In summary, we focused upon the contributions that the general clinical environment can make to er error in healthcare. We discussed cognitive limitations, unclear directions, changes in communication and roles, alert fatigue, and many other aspects, and described how they combine to make the environment dangerous. Although health IT cannot change these environmental characteristics, for instance, a busy emergency room is, uh, is going to be busy regardless, what health IT must not do is add further complexity and anxiety to an already overwhelming environment. In contrast, what health IT can and must do is make the right thing to do the easiest thing to do and contribute to safe and effective practice. The basic premise in this presentation is that understanding how error is facilitated in context helps you to understand how to design and buy better systems.